Ahoy, shipmates! We're hitting the streets of Southampton today for the Light the South Lighthouse Art Trail. This one is Inside Out, What Do You See? by the artist Finding Chewy. Finding Chewy's design features three characters who enter this world all wearing a set of masks to help represent their own characteristics. Finding Chewy's world embodies self-expression and the idea of wearing masks on the outside. The Japanese style glyphs stand for Uragashi, which is one of the name of the Finding Chewy's world, and means inside out. The artist likes to create these totem style characters and the lighthouse sculpture would be a really exciting way to show them off, so he says. Uh, this one is the first one. We are up in a Bedford place at the top of town here. There we go, in a side out. What do you see? Uh, there is a, left, a website to go with the art trail as an app for your phone. Ideal activity for the children. Keep them really busy during the summer months when they've got nothing to do. And of course it's free. Right, off we go. Head down to a number two. Wait for the traffic to pass around the crazy one-way system. And number two is Folk House by Jess Perrin. This design was inspired by European folk art and features florals in a different shade of pink as well as muted green foliage. Folk House is a pretty design and it's sure to capture the hearts of everyone who comes upon it. It was giving me a sort of Laura Ashley feel, that's how I what's coming across. Quite difficult to see this one in the shade here. The weather will be a feature of today's walk as we zigzag our way across the city. We are in the, the shadow here of the Cenotaph. Recently refurbished, you can in fact see all the names that were etched onto the side that have slowly worn off over the years are now replaced on these glass panels here at the side. Off across the street. If you're an old Southampton local, you will remember over here used to be an aviary, but that's long since disappeared. Number three is Connecting Souls by Molly Hawkins, sponsored by Ahmed Tees. Uh, designs a visual exploration of connecting flow and light, and it even glows in the dark. Certainly getting a good recharge in this sun. I'll have to pop up at night time and see how it looks at night. Drawing inspirations from ethereal interactions between individuals and the artwork incorporates hand gestures, universal symbols of communication. to get some of these greens that glow. I couldn't really see it in the bright sun. Never mind, I'll come back later in the evening and have a look at that. Heading down now into the cultural quarter by the John Hansard Gallery for Floral Beacon by Mr. A. Singh. 
Mr. Asix produced over 40 sculptures all over the UK. Floor Beacon is in fact sponsored by the John Hassan Gallery. The beacon stands for a testament of nature's enduring resilience. It's quite a textural one, this. And some uh, lovely colours as well. Looks particularly good in the sunlight. some sort of something applied to the surface there and painted over. Off now to the library for... This is All the Light We Can See by Maureen Lafrenet. Inspired by Van Gogh's Starry Night, as you might be the same as me to get a bit closer. Lovely position here, right outside of the library. Oh, there's also an art gallery here. Get yourself in and have a look. It is free of charge. During the artist's work with the RNLI, she redeveloped Grace Darling museum in Northumberland and learnt a lot about the isolation, beauty and joy of living in a lighthouse. I think that's what some of these little drawings refer to. Looks like a map of the Surrey there, shipmates. I recognise some of that. And some lovely little details on this one. There's a poem here by Lem Sisse. And this part here was inspired by Van Gogh's Starry Night. we go to the next one, past the non-working fountain, which is a shame because it uh, looks really pretty when it's going. We can play right in front of the art gallery here with the civic clock tower in the background. It was one of those days when we were filming this, sometimes it was sunny and sometimes it threatened rain. The next one is located outside of the Sea City Museum, just around the corner. Next up we have He Is A Keeper by Tracy Moss. This one is a lighthouse keeper, guardian of the shore, keeping everyone safe. Painted in the enchanting style of a vintage toy, with his charming face and crisp, colourful uniform, this fellow stands tall and proud, caring about everyone and protection for all. He is a keeper, is sponsored by Greenhouse Graphics, a sustainable printing company in Hampshire. Perfectly located right outside the Sea City Museum. If you're interested in the maritime history of Southampton, I can recommend 
a visit to the CC Museum. I'll have a little detail there on his button. The museum is quite extensive and covers a great deal about the Titanic. So if you're particularly interested in the Titanic, I can certainly recommend it. Around this house in traditional light keeper style, he's holding a lantern, which is interesting because I don't think these lighthouses light up, which I find totally disappointing. I would have thought they could have incorporated some sort of solar powered light in the top when it comes on at night time, a gentle glow, maybe even a little gentle flash. No, that's uh, not happening. Right, off to the next one. Just across the street here is the BBC Radio Solid Studios. And they have a neat sundial out the front. Unfortunately, not enough sun to read the time. There's some lovely brutalist architecture in this part of town. We are opposite the train station. This concrete building has recently been painted with this very stunningly bright graphic design all over it. The paint that was used in this artwork supposedly captures CO2 from the atmosphere. I think if you use that QR code, you can find out more about it. Sort of cartoony-esque. Steve Johnson drew his inspiration for Ancient by wanting to depict fossil-rich architecture of Hampshire coastline. It shows several different layers of colourful sediment with clues to the various remains of animals and plants that lived in the region and the many rock formations. Ancient is sponsored by Portons Park, the home of Peppa Pig World, with over 70 rides and attractions. Certainly a lot of fossil hunting in Dorset. I don't know if there's much fossil hunting in Hampshire that I'm aware of. So let me know in the comments if I've got that wrong. Yeah, quite a good juxtaposition against the painted building there. This is pretty much as far west as we go. So it's got to head back up to the Civic Centre now or the next lighthouse. Number eight is Come On You Red and Whites by Will Rosie, Mr. Mosaic, our local artist. Red and white roses are almost as well known in Southampton as seafaring. The design combines seafaring and the roses of the city's crest to create an instantly recognisable symbol. Come on, you reds and whites is sponsored by Southampton City Council. As you can say, this is quite an interesting one again. Mr Mosaic living up to his name. He has covered the light. Quite a three-dimensional effect there. Certainly a very popular symbol around town, the Red Rose. We see it in Southampton and the cricket team. I think this chap thought I was nuts. Placed on the top of the hill here, where the train station is behind us, next to the other sculptures in the area. Right across the street here, roadworks are going on to convert this two-way traffic into a one-way system. It does cause a bit of inconvenience around town. 
This is Triangulation by Julian Mason. Julian Mason was inspired by 3D modeling and computer generated imagery to create a mesh or wire frame around the model of a lighthouse. The title of the piece refers to 3D technology, 3D computer generated models. I was specifically looking at 3D survey technologies that are used in geolocation and topographical surveys. Triangulation is sponsored by Partridge Mini. I quite like this one. I think this would make a jolly good pattern for a tie. Rainbow effect and all the triangulation. I think there should be a light in there. Why isn't there a light in there? Right, across the street to the next one. Number 10, Ship of the Stars, created by Mick Richardson. This one is sponsored by Southampton Children's Hospital. It's right outside the Quilter building. Mike has painted 103 wild in art sculptures for 51 trails and an additional 29 for other trails. He's a huge sci-fi fan, so when I saw the lighthouse sculpture, a spaceship was his first thought. The sleek ship of the stars has a 3D effect, metal panels, cooling pipes, cockpit and engines facing skyward, ready to blast off. A painted sheet of acetate will fit inside the light housing to give the effect of crackling plasma or even just a blue glowing light in place of a white one. Certainly does look like a spaceship. Right, let's see if we can find the light. What's the next one, shipmates? Number 11 is Copper Top by Angus. Again, sponsored by Southampton Hospitals Charity. This one, I think, probably needs no introduction to its star. It is covered in copper coins. It must have taken a fair while to stick all those on. Design uses copper coins that will shine bright in any conditions, which makes it fitting to be used on a lighthouse, giving those looking for a noticeable object the direction that they need to go. Mainly consisting of two pence pieces with the occasional penny here and there. But it's really well covered and they even covered up the lens at the top as well. They are with silver coins look like ten pence pieces. I quite like this one again. It's visually stunning. Very distinctive compared to the others. Probably weighs a lot more as well. This one is in the Marlins Shopping Centre. Slightly more alternative shopping centre than, say, Whiskey. It's a little bit quieter and it has a different variety of shops. Also has a fantastic pancake restaurant that's just upstairs. Yeah, it's just over that way. There, up there somewhere. Off to the next one. Number 12, Lighthouse Rock by Amy Bourbon. This design contains textured layers forming a tactile and life-like crevices. It certainly does. It looks very distressed and weathered. Maybe you would probably call this a patina of age. Sponsored by Southampton's Hospital Charity. The surface scars and smoother areas reflect the vital work of Southampton Hospital Charity, reflecting the power of healing whilst allowing the very real scars to exist. The rock design links into the idea of strength and resilience. 
qualities that are so important in the work of the charity. I would say this is a very detailed lighthouse, this one. Real effort's gone into making this. It looks very realistic. And compared to the others, it might well have been here for years. As you can see, we are just outside the Marlins Shopping Centre. Right, let's go and find the next one. Number 13, Dive, Dive, Dive by Zoe Sadler. Sponsored by Hampshire Cricket Foundation. As an illustrator living on an island, the Isle of Wight, Zoe, the artist, is constantly connected and surrounded by water. She's inspired by the environment around her, myths, legends and tales of the sea and the underwater world. Zoe likes to take everyday and ordinary and turn it into something extraordinary. Dive, Dive, Dive is sponsored by Hampshire Cricket Foundation, who are also our learning partner for the Little Light Learning Programme. That's the smaller lighthouses. This one's located, as you see, outside the entrance to the Marlin Shopping Centre. Certainly does represent all that you can see in the underwater world under the sea. And there's a diver. Pretty neat stuff, eh? Right, I think we need to go and find another one. On we go, shipmates. Number 14, Always the Sun by Marnie Marie. Marnie Marie wanted to create a design that represented the ultimate endless bright guiding light of the sun, using warm oranges, bright yellows and an iridescent gold to mirror the light cast from a lighthouse. Always the Sun is sponsored by Bewley. Certainly is bright and colourful. Reminds me slightly of sort of Art Deco design. The gold accent, accenting there is particularly effective in this sunny day now that the sun's decided to pop itself out. This is right at the northern end of the pedestrian precinct. There's the West Key Shopping Centre behind us, or behind the lighthouse, I should say. It's uh, the same design around the back as well. Just thought I'd check. Right, off to the next one. And that's just down here outside Whiskey Shopping Centre. Number 15, Super Marine Spitfire by Tim Sutcliffe. The design is inspired by the most famous aeroplane in Britain. The main body is painted with the classic camouflage design, including the classic red and white blue circles. The foot of the lighthouse takes its colour from the paler underside of the plane, whilst the top is based around the nose cone. A lot of history here in the Port of Southampton with the Spitfire. There was a play recently, a couple of years ago, talking about how when the Luftwaffe bombed the factory manufacturing the Spitfire, all parts of the Spitfire, they decided to distribute the manufacturing all across the town to so all small workshops, garages, all little places were manufacturing little tiny parts of the Spitfire, making it harder to be bombed by the Luftwaffe. Right, on to the next one, shipmates. This is number 16, The Well-Being Beacon by Emily Harper. Sponsored by the University of Southampton. The artist says, we aim to encourage people to take steps to improve their well-being in their daily lives. When this isn't enough, the University of Southampton's biomedical engineering program is training future leaders in how technology can be used to support better health and wellness. Together, we can change lives. The team of biomedical engineers and undergraduates, students, PhDs, research fellows, lecturers, readers, and professors in the Digital Health and Biomedical Engineering Group in the School of Electronics and Computer Science of the University of Southampton are engaged in cutting-edge research on technology, sport, health, and well-being. The team is proud to partner with Mount Pleasant Primary School to encourage STEM and instill ownership and wellness in our school children. 
Well, this one was certainly covered in electronics and screens, which is right up my street, and knobs, but the knobs didn't work. And the screens didn't appear to do anything. I, I was expecting something interactive, or at least, you know, push a button, it does something, hogs, flashes of light. But no, nothing from that one. Right, on to the next one, shipmates. Not sure if I've mentioned it, but there are also a number of small lighthouses. These were typically decorated by children. Quite intricate, some of them. Um, very interesting. I didn't bother covering these because they were in different locations and all over the place. And I was already covering 40 lighthouses as it was. And so I thought uh, I'd skip these. But there was a little collection of here. So I'll whiz by and show you what the smaller lighthouses looked like. Yep, very good. But that is not what we're looking for. This is not the droid you are looking for. By Tim Sutcliffe. We have the addition of two robotic legs. This idea transforms the lighthouse into a giant astro robot from the future. He's covered in panels and switches, essentials to his operation along with laser damage and meteor scrapes from his many adventures. This is not the droid you're looking for. It's sponsored by Solid Stevedores, who provide a broad range of cargo handling services at the port of Southampton. And in case you didn't know, this is from Star Wars classic line spoken by Sir Alec Guinness. He famously had no idea what the script was all about thought it was a lot of mumbo jumbo but was quite savvy when he accepted a percentage of the royalties i like this one covered in detail lots of little bits stuck on legs you know panels it does indeed look like a droid pointy out bit there as well i'm sure at auction this will probably be one of the favorites that people want to bid on it's even painted the inside. Right, shipmates, on to the next one. <laughs> Number 18, Starry Starry Night by Thin Hollingsworth. Sponsored by Southampton International Boat Show, which is quite apt because there's a big hashtag. Southampton International Boat Show, whatever it is, like sibs. Very confusing. No one ever knows what it means. Of course, this looks very much like a Van Gogh picture, because that's the inspiration. Looks pretty good. I quite like it. Starry, 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 because the boat's on there. The artist says, the lighthouse sculpture design Starry, Starry Night it draws inspiration from Van Gogh's The Starry Night. With its painted design, it features a swirling night sky that sweeps around the outside of the lighthouse with stars that light the way for ships to see. The lighthouse and the stars serve as a beacon of hope and wonder casting celestial aura on both the land and sea, reminding us of the beauty that can be found in the night sky. Starry Starry's Night was sponsored by our auction hosts, Southampton International Boat Show. At the end of the art trail, when all the lighthouses are returned, they will be auctioned off and you will be free to bid on whichever lighthouse you want. There you go, here's the hashtag for SIBS24, so that's Southampton International Boat Show 24. It's very confusing. There you go, SIBS24. It was actually quite a busy day while we were out and about filming this and did bump into a group of very happy shipmates. Park at the same time. But anyway, off to the next one, shipmates. This is number 19 for the love of public transport by Rosalind Burroughs. 
as you can imagine with the name like that it has been sponsored by a certain company their trail partner williams shipping uh, the artist believes that it's really important to be encouraging people to choose to take public transport as often as possible for environmental and traffic reasons however ross says that she understands many people view it negatively this design aims to show all forms of public transport in a fun way to help remove stigma around riding public transport. I think she does that. We've got all sorts of trains. Looks like we've got trains from the southwest. Uh, I think that's a bus. Here they do exist. People walking. A uh, chap there with an underground shirt on. That's rather amusing. As you can see, drawing quite the attention of all sorts of people. It's a fun thing to do with the children if you have a, a day where you want to wear them out. It's about 12 miles if you do the whole lot, so they will definitely be exhausted. This is probably the busiest part in town the lighthouse on right off to the next one shipmates through the bar gate putting the stars out to shine by Marnie Mori say hello to the star cleaners a group of busy little pixies who live in the clouds and help to keep the stars twinkling in the night sky. They make sure that all the stars sparkling clean, polish them until they can see their faces and making them as shiny as possible because even the brightest star needs a help to shine sometimes. Putting the stars out to shine is sponsored by Blue Star, Southampton's major provider of bus services in and around Southampton. Almost walked past this one, if I'm quite honest, shift mates. Ended up going to the next one, which is rather good. Uh, but this one was hidden behind these food street food stalls. I mean, excuse my navigational hiccup there. Got it right in the end. Also had to show a couple of other shipmates where it was because it was causing people lots of problems to try and find it because it just you look you look on the map the map was not particularly clear and it looked like it was just in front of the bar gate and it's well it's not there I was like well no it's behind behind the food tents number 21 dizzy flights by gina gelder the artist says this design was inspired by days at the beach and having fun at the fair I'm not sure what she's thinking about beach. There's no beach in Southampton to speak of, really. Anyway, carry on with what the artist says. The artist says, the shape of the lighthouse reminded me of a helter-skelter. And Gina, the artist, thought it would be a great sense of play and fun. The seagulls going for a ride and stealing chips are definitely having a good time. Dizzy Flights is sponsored by Belfort Beatty. Belfort Beatty is working in partnership with Southampton City Council and has provided logistical support for Southampton Hospital Charity enabling the lighthouses to take over the city this summer. We certainly do have a lot of seagulls here in the Pearl South Center. So it's quite neat. So it is a Helter Skelter. Oh, this is quite fun, actually. This one, I think children will probably like this one. Uh, it starts up the top there. You go down, you go down the Helter Skelter. Here you go. Here's, here's another chap here. He's about a quarter of the way down the Helter Skelter. Go around the that one's upside down. Typical seagull behavior, that. Another one here, he's going caw, caw, as they do, irritatingly. And this one here, he's giving up. He's just taking off. He's all right, I'm, I'm going fast enough now, I can just fly. And this one here is laughing because he's he doesn't know him better. Uh, this one, this one here looks a bit young. And uh, this one here also looks young and wants to be fed, which is typical behavior for a baby seagull. And this one here is an adult thinking, I'm not feeding you again. This chap here is thinking, I'm far enough away. And of course, this one at the very end has chips and the other one has an ice cream. This one looks rather smug for some reason. Oh, I think that's pretty good. I like that one. Very colourful, bright and sunny. Right, shipmates, off to the next one. 
heading down the QE2 mile, we end up at one of the QE2's anchors. Quite interesting to see how large they are, but see how large the ship are, they don't seem that large. Number 22, Commotion in the Ocean by Shirley Copperwhite. Shirley says, Commotion in the Ocean is a design that makes you look to see all the different things embedded in the shapes and geometry. It's all about things under the sea and how we should appreciate and protect them. We all know the oceans are under attack from our negligence, pollution and overuse through the generations until now. Now is the last chance to protect them and clean them up. Much the same way that Southampton hospitals protect and care for the patients, we too have to do the same for our oceans. This design is colourful and plays with the patterning and shapes, but it carries a serious message. No more commotion in the ocean, please. Protect the seas and the seas will protect us. Sponsored by West Key Shopping Centre. This lighthouse is located right outside Holyrood Church. Reminds me somewhat of the 1980s design. It's that sort of primary colours and blocky design. I feel like some sort of 1980s film going on in the back of my head for some reason. I'll tell you what, while we're here, let's have a look in Holyrood Church. It was heavily bombed during the Second World War and is now a sort of monument. There are a number of memorials around, plaques and so on for various different services, seamen and so on. The bell still chimes on the hour. I think it chimes on the half hour and quarter to as well. A couple of little men come out and hit some bells. Right. I think that's enough of that, shipmates. Let's head onwards. Heading further into Old Town now, shipmates. Getting closer to the water. This is All Aboard, number 23, by Will Rosie, Mr. Mosaic, our local mosaic street graffiti artist chappy. He has a bit of a penchant for the Mr. Men. As you can see, he's covered this lighthouse in his Mr. Men tiles. It's a bit of the old walls of Southampton there in the background. The Southampton used to be a walled city, and these walls kept the French invaders out, kept all our English wenches in. Mr. Will Rosie says a fun family orientated design that is compromised of a mix of both mosaic tiles and acrylic paint the rings on the lighthouse remind the artist of the decks of a ship so naturally mr mosaic wanted to fill them with a bunch of cute little passengers some of them seem to be crying maybe they're upset because their live streaming coverage of ships tv on the student ships youtube channel was unable to connect You can see Mr. Mosaics, mosaics all around town. They're randomly stuck to walls in various locations. Quite fun. He's also made mosaics for the Mayflower Trail, which I think if you search my channel, you'll find a video all about that, the Mayflower Trail. And I can show you where they all are. Right, off to the next one, shipmates. We're heading down to Oxford Street now, where all the bars, restaurants are. A fun area for adults. Number 24, How the Heck Did That Get There? by Lynn Hollingsworth. The artist says, Once upon a time, there was an old lighthouse standing tall on a rocky island in the middle of the sea. This lighthouse was different because one day a giant blue octopus decided to climb on top of it. This octopus was so massive, 
with its eight long tentacles all wrapped around it. No one knew it, how it got there or why it was there. But the giant octopus soon became a legend, and whenever sailors passed the lighthouse, they would tell the story of a giant octopus. The moral of the story is that even if creatures seem scary, they can be friendly. Why do you think the octopus climbed the lighthouse? How the heck did that get there? Sponsored by Go Southampton, who are the business improvement district for the city of Southampton. Quite like this one. It's got a good nautical theme. Another pesky little seagull there. Well, he looks friendly. Looks really three-dimensional, this one. And the red and white striping, very traditionally lighthousey. Right, the shipmates, off to the next one. We're heading down very close now to Ocean Cruise Terminal. For number 25, sponsored by Fred Olsen, unlike any other holiday. Artist is Teresa Hartnell. The artist says the sponsors of this wonderful sculpture, Fred Olsen Cruise Lines, hosted a fantastic competition for people to design their lighthouse. The winning design was created by Teresa Hartnell and brought to life by Martin Davy and Julian Mason. Fred Olsen Cruise Lines, where the journey is as important as the destination. Viewers of the channel will be familiar with the Fred Olsen Cruise Line. They are a frequent visitor to the port of Southampton with their cruise ships. They appeal to the more experienced cruiser, shall I say. The Ocean Cruise Tunnel is just to our right. If you are going on a cruise, you will probably see this as you pass by. Certainly have a whole load of cruise orientated imagery on this one. Not entirely sure you can see the pyramids from a cruise ship, but I get the idea. Flags from various nations adorn the top. And of course, another seagull. And that's a particularly grey looking sky. What's happened to this weather? It was sunny earlier. Hmm, it's not looking great, is it? Okay, well, there's the luggage that's left over. And if you're really unlucky, when they're loading the cruise ship, it falls into the dock. And then they have to send a little boat out to rescue it. And if it sinks, they have to send a diver out to rescue it. All the first world problems of travelling by cruise ship. That sky is looking menacing, isn't it? Hmm. In fact, I've got a suspicion that I'm feeling some rain. Oh dear. What are we going to do? I think we're going to have to run. We're going to have to grab one of these luggage trolleys and use it for propulsion and run to the next lighthouse, you mates. Yep, the heavens really started opening here. Rather inconvenient. So we decided to quickly pop into the God's House Tower here. It's free entry, and they had an arc ex exhibition on. I'm not sure what the purpose of this exhibition was. What to do with breathing, I think. But that's what makes the God's House Tower really interesting. There's a an area which you have to pay for a ticket to go up to the viewing platform. Alternatively, on the left hand side, there is a free area where there's often an art exhibition going on. Well, it's quite interesting to wander around the space and see what's going on. Often the exhibitions are sort of video related or require you to sit down. It's quite nice, quite comfy. A couple of levels. It's, this building was refurbished uh, relatively recently, I think about 10, 15 years ago. And there's various different rooms. They have theatres, uh, cinema, cinema nights on a Thursday night, I think second Thursday in the month. You come along and watch a film. They have a couple of films going on. But we had to come in here because look at this going on out here. It's supposed to be summer, shipmates. It's absolutely torrential. Well, I'll run a time lapse just to show you. So wet. I'm quite happy to bring you excellent content, shipmates, but. I'm not sure my camera was waterproof, so we had to come in here for the safety of the camera equipment. 
can see all the coaches in the background coming from the ocean terminal after dropping off the cruise ship passengers. Number 26, Shine Bright and Light the Way by Nathan Evans. The artist says the design combines a tapestry of abstracted maritime inspired graphic forms with a positive message of optimism about life. First, there's a series of abstracted graphic illustrations inspired by lighthouses and references connected to the sea. This includes playful visual references to light waves, the Fresnel lens, ship bow shapes, waves, and coastal currents. Secondly, there is a hand-lettered element that delivers a positive message to the viewer. The wording connects to the theme of what a lighthouse provides, whilst also delivering a more metaphorical message of hope, optimism to people, encouraging strength in individuality, whilst also having an undercurrent of how this can also benefit. Now, this has to be my favourite one. Solid Ships by Martin Davey. Now, I, I have nothing to do with this one, but it is my favourite one on many levels. Firstly, it's called Solent Ships, obviously. This is the Solent Ships YouTube channel. That's brilliant. It's in a great location. It's right by Ferry Cam. And I actually like the design of this one. The artist says it's a celebration of ships that can be seen in the Solent and some things that lurk in the darkness of the sea. It has been sponsored by Red Funnel Ferries. I mean, it's just, you couldn't ask for anything more, could you? Look at that, I like it. It's got submarines, squids, and you've got a cruise ship here. Then you've got a container ship. It looks like a looks like an E-class container ship. And then you've got the Red Funnel Ferry there, a little bit of red on there. It's a lovely bit of detail. Helicopters, of course. I always have lots of helicopters. And we've got round here, there's another commercial ship that looks like a well it's a smaller smaller vessel there that's the cowshot light vessel that looks like a super yacht that's a hovercraft and there is a seaplane some sort of tall ship a general commercial vessel there and a shipwreck as well as well as looks like the great tangling tentacles of an octopus there's another cruise ship. That looks like a Roro. I do like a Roro. A couple of tugs there. A yacht. Looks like a... Oh, yeah, another cruise ship. That's brilliant. That is, without doubt, I've seen every lighthouse, so I know that is my favourite one. When it comes up for auction ship, mates, I'm going to bid on that one. I had to grab an umbrella because it was pouring down. Right, shipmates, off to the next one. Number 28. Chip Chip Hooray by Hannah Jane Lewin. The artist says this design was inspired by the humble fish finger. This tea time treat was tested in Southampton in the 1950s by Clarence Birdseye. They proved such a popular success that on the 26th of September 1955, the fish finger was officially launched by Birdseye. Hannah Jane Lewin's design shows a delicious fish and chip cone wrapped in newspaper and topped with ketchup. Look carefully at the newspaper for some fun ocean puns. Let's see what we got here. A whale of a time. The Daily Star, yeah. A whale of a time was had by those who enjoyed something or other. Going a bit too fast here, aren't I? It was a really great catch. Oh dear. Yeah, full of puns on that one. This is probably my favourite pub in town, the Dancing Man Brewery. You'll probably see me there after. Number 29, Love and Stability by Riley Creative. The artist says, husband and wife duo Riley Creative's design has taken inspiration from Southampton's flag. Designed in 2017, it depicts an anchor and a Tudor rose. They have taken these elements and with a nod to the beautiful windows that can be found in St. Mary's Church, have turned them into a stained glass effect design. We have called it love to represent the delicate rose and stability of the strength of an anchor. As you can see, it's still raining, rather annoyingly, but I do like this one. I think the anchor appeals to me somewhat. And 
as you can see it's a really damp day here was rather sunny earlier and cloudy to start with but i think we've had all weathers right let's see if we can go and find the next one shall we submit fortunately i made a slight navigational error and went to number 31 instead of number 30 next so oops here we are now now we're on the right one Number 30, Take Me to the Healing Seas by Brian Reed and Emma Tuck. Sponsored by Southampton's Hospitals Charity. Artists Brian and Emma have had a very personal relationship to Southampton General Hospital since late September 2023, when Brian underwent an emergency open heart surgical operation for a type A aortic dissection. The visual language proposed for this project focuses on the abstract connection of the hospital and water, the body and the sea, and the healing process of the two. Hospital decor has inspired and morphed into the fish and light elements on top and the bottom of the lighthouses. Housed in between, this is text developed and written by both Brian and Emma during his stay and her visits. This one is behind the walls, a little difficult to find, which is why I think uh, I didn't find it the first time. And it looks a bit Art deco design, doesn't it? Right then, shipmates, let's walk through this gate and head off and find the one that we found just a minute ago, but so this time for real. Number 31, The Future is in Your Hands by May Summers Perkins. The artist says, The future is in your hands. It's a vibrant call to action, driven by a deep commitment to environmental education, bridging generational gaps. It enlightens both children and adults on the urgent need to safeguard our planet. Drawing from literary explorations, charity shop volunteering, and observations of materialism, the artwork unfolds as a kaleidoscope of colour, symbolising the energy needed for positive change. Emphasising small, impactful steps against climate change, the design includes intriguing details like bananas urging contemplation on low-carbon choices. While captivating aesthetics, the artwork prompts viewers to reflect on their role in shaping a sustainable future and engaging in meaningful conversation. Right, certainly bright and colourful, that one. Right, let's head on up to the next one. We walk past the old... This is the old seafront here in Southampton. Originally, the walls on the right were the boundary, and we would be walking effectively on the dockside. Number 32, Beautiful Oceans by Cyan Story Art. Sponsored by DP World. The artist says the lighthouse celebrates the beauty hidden in our oceans, vast, deep and mysterious. We know little about our beautiful oceans. They hide wondrous creatures and habitats, including perhaps one of the most ethereal of all, the seahorse. Wild and wonderful, the design shows two spiny seahorses entwined. They represent the fragile, protected species that are found right here in the English Channel. I have to say, I think this is quite pretty, this one. Really is a very pretty seahorse. Very good set of colours there. Rule really stands out. Sponsored by DP World, a multinational logistics company. I'm sure their cargo ships have churned up a few seahorses in their time. Well, at the moment, the rain has eased off a little. It's not quite so bad. This one, again, is down... Getting closer back to West Quay now, this is outside the old walls. Still raining though. Right, on to the next one, shipmates, which is just here. <laughs> Not far to go this time for a change. But you could see this one from the one. Number 33, The Amazing Lighthouse by Devon Burke. I'd be tempted to say this one was a bit corny, but that uh, might be beneath me. 
<laughs> no, no, no. Uh, the artist says the amazing large houses are fun design inspired by local produce that Hampshire has to offer. The varied growing conditions of Hampshire and the Isle of Wight range from the coast to the countryside, river valley to downland, heath to forest, yield an abundance of local produce. The amazing house is sponsored by Pickwell Farm, a small family-run business established over 40 years ago. Makes sense that a lighthouse sponsored by a farm looks like a big corn the cob. Yeah, it's wonderfully painted. It does stand out. I wonder if it's because it's it's all grey and overcast and raining at the moment that it looks even more bright and colourful than I would imagine. Lovely, lovely high contrast, that one. Easy to spot. Right, shipmates, let's go off and find the next one. Number 34, Simply Southampton by Jess Perrin. The artist says the design inspired by all things Southampton, featuring some of Southampton's most prominent landmarks, from the city walls to the iconic cranes that adorn the shores of the harbour. You're sure to see many places you recognise all over the lighthouse. Jess has created a design using a bright, colourful palette which really boosts your mood as soon as you see it. So take a moment and see what you can spot on your favourite aspects of Southampton, sponsored by ABP. It is bright and colourful, I agree, especially on this grey afternoon that we're now experiencing. What can we see here? That looks like the walls we've just walked past, doesn't it? That's the old walls of the city. Possibly the bar gate. There's representation of a union flag I believe that's Tudor House um, a ship of I'm not sure what ship that is oh I think it's supposed to be a cruise ship uh, I'm not sure that's the Needles the Needles Lighthouse I recognize that spend many a time there oh, look at that gray sky oh I mean it's just awful awful weather right then shipmates next one Next up, number 35, Shine On by Paint Shop. This one is located over by St. Mary's Stadium near the River Itchen. I didn't bother having the, the walk over there because it just took a long time. Paint Shop collaborated with Southampton Football Club to bring a new twist to the classic lighthouse markings. We took the traditional horizontal red and white bars often found on a lighthouse and, of course, the iconic red stripes of the Saints shirts, blending them, distorting these styles, of a dazzle camouflage often used in the Navy in World War II. Shine is sponsored by Southampton Football Club. If you have a look at my video of the ferry across the Mersey, you'll see the ferry has dazzle, dazzle camouflage, so have a check that out. This was a long way to get to. This is a, a long way from the rest of them, shipmates. It's a bit of a walk. As you see, it's dried out since then, which was good. Oh yeah, it's right outside the stadium. Should be easy to spot opposite the aggregate works of Semexco Innovation. Now, the next one uh, is even further away. In fact, we have to get on the Red Funnel Ferry and take the ferry to Cows. East Cows on the Isle of Wight. As it happens, the weather was pretty decent. So, had a good crossing. Saw plenty of things out there, plenty of ships passing by. Here we are coming into Cowes. And on our way now to try and find the first lighthouse on the Isle of Wight. Rather sneakily, it was right as you get on the ferry in the car park. I don't think the map was very good for this one. And there's number 36, Moo Selfie on the Isle of Wight. By artist Lucy Tidbury. Lucy is a Dorset-based artist known mostly for her moo selfies inspired by our beautiful countryside and it's often curious for legged residents. Lucy's work captures our stunning local scenery but with a humorous side. She uses vibrant colours and to add a cheerful feel to each painting but also depicting the scenery in a realistic style. The animals that feature in her paintings have a comical friendly feel often inspired by the animals she meets whilst walking across our countryside with her spaniels. Moo Selfie on the Isle of Wight is sponsored by our presenting partner, the Red Funnel Ferry. And then you see that's the needles, and then a seagull. Oh, it's just actually a fairly accurate description there. There's even some detail there in the little window. 
quite like that one. Quite fun. Good colours. And the cow does look quite exciting. As you can see, lots of yachts and boats here in cows. Very close proximity, proximity to the red funnel. detail there of the stairs inside with a vase of flowers. Right, shipmates, on to the next one. Number 37, Light of the Green by Rachel and Philippa Corcott. This design showcases the glorious fresh produce, nature and plants across the southeast, highlighting the beauty of the natural world and the importance of protecting our environment. This lighthouse features the apple orchards, vines and watercress meadows across Southampton and Hampshire, as well as strawberries, tomato plants, honey from the Isle of Wight. We're celebrating green spaces, nature and sustainability. Sponsored again by Red Funnel. Quite appropriate that this one is outside of Waitrose here in East Cows in the Isle of Wight where you'll be able to purchase most of this, the produce shown on the lighthouse. And there is a bunch of grapes. Grapes are grown in Hampshire. And in fact, English sparkling wine is produced in Hampshire. Some of the best sparkling wine in the world, beating the French at their own game. That looks like Osborne House to me. honey there at the bottom. Right, shipmates, let's go off and see if we can find the next one. I did spot something here that may be of interest. Looks like a nautical signage. What's all this then? With courage, nothing is impossible. R-N-L-I. There we go. Excellent. Right, shipmates, off we go. See what we can find next. Right, we have to go across the Medina River here, but as per usual, the floating bridge is broken. So in that case, there is a replacement boat service. It's not often you hear that every day, is there? A little tiny ferry, only for pedestrians. Uh, the floating bridge takes cars and bicycles and all sorts. This is just a pedestrian-only uh, temporary replacement boat service. But it's quite fun, so we are on another boat across to West Cows now, where there's a few more lighthouses to go, then we'll be finished. As you can see, the sun is setting. This is turning into quite a long day. This is our second boat. And on the other side of the Isle of Wight. The floating bridge before the one that we, is in operation now, or it's not in operation because it's broken, was very reliable. And the replacement one has been very unreliable. Sometimes new things aren't necessarily better, are they, shipmates? There we go. No mooring, no fishing, no swimming. We go. Number 38, Treasure of the South by Marta Zubita. The artist says this artwork is a little homage to the treasures that we can find on our coasts and to one of the artist's favourite activities, exploring rock pools. Best way to enjoy the sea shore ecosystem and learn about the creatures that coexist in it. It tells us about respecting nature and the beauty of the south coast. Inspired by finding small treasures in rock pools, Zubetta found similarities between these discoveries and visitors discovering the city of Southampton, its life and its treasures within. Treasures of the South is sponsored by Trinity House. Trinity House is a maritime organisation that supports to safeguard ships and seafarers. Certainly a strong nautical theme on this one, shipmates. Right then, shipmates, off to the next one. Down here on the Esplanade, number 39, Pop Art Twister by Olivier Jamin. Olivier Jamin is an award-winning contemporary death artist who represents a playful design optimising 
the unusual dimensions of the sculpture eye-catching from afar and its bright pop art style colours and sweeping contours. The changing colour scheme invites visitors to look at the sculptures from each side, catching a new view with every new angle. The artist, Olivia, wanted to create a spiral flow around the lighthouse in contrast to the usual block columns often found on this type of building. The helix form being inspired by the fairground helter skelters and circus patterns. Well, I certainly stand on that trick. This is a very bright, shining lighthouse here on the Esplanade. It's starting to get a little dark now. Reminds me of something of uh, like Pinball Wizard for some reason is why I'm thinking when I see this. Right then, shipmates, off to the last one. Can you believe it? And here, last but not least, number 40, Yo-Ho Glow by Gina Gelder. Yo-Ho Glow is inspired by pirates and meant to inspire a sense of adventure. Gina loved pirate stories as a child and wanted to transport you into a ship's cabin. There are lots of little details to find with in Gina's design, not least all the piratey pun book titles. She wanted to paint something with a bit of fun and encourage imagination. Yo-Ho Glow is sponsored by Reynolds and Reed, one of the Isle of Wight's largest plant hire and transport services. I'd say this is probably one of my favourites. It really does feel like a captain's cabin here with some interesting titles we've got here. Up in the Crow's Nest by Luke Out. Uh, ship Repairs by Woody Leak. Spotting Sea Monsters by C.A. Kraken. Birds for Pirates by Macaw. I do like those. Some good book titles there. Raiding Ships by Buck Arneer. Pirate Prosthetics by Peggy Leg. There's even an octopus or sea monster trying to break into the ship. Oh, I do like this, this one. I think this is a brilliantly themed one. I do like the little punny books. Yo ho ho, a pirate's life for me. I think that's what it says around the belly of the lighthouse here. The obligatory parrot. And of course, a treasure map. Couldn't be without a treasure map. All right, here we are, shipmates. The sun is setting. That's been a full on day to visit all 40 lighthouses, a ferry, and a replacement ferry service. So, treat myself to what else other than fish and chip supper. Perfect to refuel the captain after a day trudging around Southampton and the Isle of Wight. We covered 12 and a half miles visiting all these lighthouses, all 40 lighthouses. Certainly an interesting day out. So if you do need something to do in the summer shipmates, have some small ones with you that need something to keep them occupied. I can wholeheartedly recommend the Lighthouse Trail. It's a good website for it and an app. It's all a bit interactive. You can collect them and see how far you've gone and such like. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one, Shipmates. It's a little bit different, I know. And this is actually, actually if you're still watching, I'm, <laughs> I thank you because I think this is actually turning out to be quite a long video. I didn't know how to make it any other way. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one, Shipmates. Until next time. <laughs>